Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited for checking out the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game from Evil Hat Productions. This is for one to five players, ages 13 plus, taking about 30 minutes to play. And in the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game, you are going to be playing as one of the people from the Dresden Files going into books and solving mysteries. I think they solve mysteries and fight crime, maybe. I'm not sure. I've never actually read the books. Uh, I love cooperative games, though, and I love games that are asymmetrical, which this has as well. Does that mean it's good? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, so we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of the Dresden Files cooperative card game. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule booklet, 15 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very, very well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. Also, boom, QR code on the front. Learn the game in 12 minutes. So huge thumbs up on the rule booklet here. So in the Dresden Files cooperative card game, you and up to four other players are going to be uh, going out on a Dresden Files book. I know I've never read any of the books, so I, I might sound like a noob on this. So yeah, I apologize for that. But you're going to be completing the story of one book. Each book is actually going to be 12 different cards, which right now I have the Summer Night book set out. It's going to be 12 different cards that will be set out here. These cards will have various different effects. Some will be bad guys. Some will be mysteries you have to solve. Some will be obstacles. Uh, some will be advantages you can gain. And I'll show you how all that works in a minute. Before we get to that, each player is going to have to select a character. Now, in the base game, you're only going to get five characters. So if you're playing a five-player game, you're going to be using all the characters. Now, I do want to mention uh, I have the expansions in here. And as you can see, there's lots and lots of characters. And lots and lots of missions but in the base game you're going to be getting five characters and i believe five missions so five missions isn't too bad not to mention there's something called an odd jobs deck where you can kind of create your own missions but i'll talk more about that in the pros and cons so let's take a look at the book uh, the board out here the board is very clean concise tells you what you need to know so first we have our fate points down here fate points are how you are going to spend cards so as you can see, each card that you're going to have is going to have a certain number of fate on it that you will have to spend. Obviously, better things that you're going to do are going to cost you more fate. When you spend fate, it goes from the earned pile to the spent pile. And if you ever run out of fate, it's it's bad news uh, if, you don't, if you can't get more back. Luckily, getting more back is easy, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Next, you're going to have attack tokens over here. You'll be attacking the bad guys, which are the guys in red. And it shows you how many hits they need on the bottom left-hand corner. Likewise, you're going to have clues right here. And the clues will show you how many you need to uh, how many clues you need to solve it in the bottom left hand corner. You might also notice that there's a lot of card text out here and that's because a lot of these clues and bad guys and advantages and everything will work off of other cards. So it's very important that you take a moment at the beginning of the game to read what everything is and say, all right, we need to go for this guy first, we need to go for this guy next, we need to go for this guy, and then this lady. Uh, you really need to be focused on what each mission is and what cards are on each mission because each mission does have drastically different cards that will do different things, which is obviously pretty cool. So what you're going to do is you are going to draw cards now from your special deck. So each character is going to have their own special deck of cards. And they're going to shuffle them up and draw as many cards as it pertains to how many players you have. So if you have more players, you will get less cards. We'll just say we're going to be drawing, I don't know, this many cards. So let's take a look at some of the cards you're going to be getting. So, nice. we got a nice little smorgasbord. So this one is Overcome. So there will be obstacles that you will have to deal with. Obstacles are going to have the yellow and black tape on them. Uh, so let's take a look at this card. In order to play this card, I would need to spend one fate. Also, in order to play this card, the obstacle has to be within one range. How does the range work? Well, it's quite simple. Range 1, range 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There you go. You figured out range. Very nice. Uh, so this card would not do me any good right now because uh, there's no obstacles in range 1. Now let's take a look. This is an attack card. So this is going to cost me two fate to spend, potentially. Now, you're going to notice that this white box pops up quite a lot. So for instance, it's there as well. This means that you're going to roll one of these dice right here. In this particular instance, one dice. This has plus, minus, 
or nothing. This is going to decide how much fate you spend. So you're going to spend one, two, or three fate. If you get a plus when you roll the dice, it's going to cost you three fate. If you roll a negative when you roll the dice, it's going to cost you one fate. And if you roll this, it's going to cost you two fate. So very interesting mechanism there. But this one is going to do two hits to somebody one range. Once again, I can't do this. We need to solve a mystery and we need to overcome this advantage here. So this attack is also not going to work. And this one, the Pyro Fuego, this one's going to cost you four fate, but it's going to add two hits to all foes in one row, uh, which in this instance isn't that great because there's not that many foes. There's only three foes. There's a lot more mysteries, but in other missions that could be very valuable. Now, here we go. We got to take advantage. So we have one fate. It's going to one range. Now, this means that we could take advantage of this card right here. So let's just go ahead and do it. We haven't read what it does, but we'll play this card. This card is now out of the game for the most part forever, unless other cards will let you take it back. This goes down in front of us, and uh, we'll tilt it to the side so we know we've spent it. And so we would spend one fate, and boom, we've taken care of this one advantage. When taken, active player may move any one obstacle one to three range. Uh, active player draws two cards. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll just put, uh, we'll put, move this forward. One, two, three. We'll get this up closer because we want to get rid of the obstacles. No real rhyme or reason to this. I haven't read everything. But now everything is going to slide down and this card is going to go into the book discard pile. I also draw two cards, which is really nice because normally in this game, you will not draw cards terribly often at all. Now, this is something I do want to mention. How, how does this game work really is you're never going to be drawing cards unless cards specifically tell you to. So once you run out of cards and once everyone runs out of cards, it's pretty much game over. Now you haven't lost yet, but it is game over and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. So uh, the next person might go, and let's just pretend it gets back to me. And so now I might want to go ahead and do some clues. So, for instance, add two clues to all cases in one row. I'd spend the four of eight. Boom, boom, boom. And just like that, I've got two clues here, two clues there, and two clues here. So that was great. For the cost of four fate, I got six clues. Now what's eventually going to happen is you're going to be low on fate. Or maybe you might get to the point where it's like, oh, man, uh... We've killed all the, you know, well, we wouldn't get to that. We've solved all the advantages, and I still have this advantage card in my hand. So let's just say this advantage was off the board, but I still had an advantage card in my hand. Well, this is going to be an instance where you can gain back fate. So how you gain back fate is you discard a card, and then you gain that many fate. So let's roll the dice. Boom. I would actually get one fate for this. Now, luckily... Uh, and I haven't mentioned this, each character is very asymmetrical in the aspect that they're going to have their own asymmetrical powers. So each character is going to have their own talent. And the talent is a persistent special ability you will have throughout the game. So when you discard for fate points, you may move one obstacle or advantage card forward or backward one space in either row. So you know what? I could now move this even closer. And that just comes in addition to me discarding the fate and gaining fate, or discarding a card and gaining fate. Now, likewise, you're also going to get one stunt you can do. And a stunt is something you can do once per game, and they're normally very, very good. So this is the blasting rod as your turn. Flip this card over to add four hit points to any one foe. That will be defeated by one to four hit points. So this is a killing blow on a big bad guy. So right now it's not useful at all, but when we get something weakened down to four, Harry can take his whole turn, boom, blast it, and it's gone. Very useful special ability. But that being said, most of the talents and most of the stunts on the different characters are really cool. And they really do give you your own unique aspect, and you need to figure out when to use it at the proper time. So you're going to continue moving along, taking turns, you know, taking care of obstacles and then taking care of bad guys and clues and whatnot until you eventually get to the point where everyone's run out. Uh, so let's just say I am completely out of cards, but somebody else has cards. When that happens, the game is not over because I just have to spend a fate to take a pass on your turn. So on your turn, you really have three options. You can play a card and, you know, attack things or get clues or overcome obstacles you can discard a card and earn that much fate you can use your stunt which you can only use once per game and then you flip it over like this so that you know that it is a uh, dunzo and then last but not least you can pass and when you pass you have to spend a fate which is not ideal but sometimes it's the only option you have anywho 
How do you win the game? You're going to win the game by solving more clues than you have bad guys. So in this instance, in order to win this game, we would have to either kill all three bad guys, because if we kill all three bad guys, boom, we automatically win. We would have to solve all four clues, because then we would have solved more clues than bad guys, or any combination of the above. So essentially how it works is how many... How many um, mysteries you solve is how many points you have and then how many negative points you have is how many bad guys you have left on the table so you have to beat how many bad guys are left on the table if you're able to do that then you will win the dresden files games but even if you don't get to that number and say your game is over you still have one last chance effort to potentially uh kill bad guys or solve clues now as you can see it's very highly unlikely that you're going to be able to do this because let's just say you've spent all your foe and you have a foe right here with uh, say eight hits so we got eight hits on this guy he's going to need two damage to do it that means we're going to roll six dice and we're hoping to get two points so it's all up to the luck right now and this time we actually would have successfully killed that guy so each game normally is going to come down to either you winning or you having a stand-up dice roll type of moment. Uh, but that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to get inside of the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game. Alrighty then, the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game from Evil Hat Productions. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, this is based on an IP, which means if you've never read the Dresden Files, you're going to get a little bit less out of this game than other people are. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the same with Battlestar Galactica. While I love Battlestar Galactica, I know that people who have watched Battlestar Galactica a lot get a little bit more out of the game. It's not a huge con, but it is something that I did want to mention. Also, if you're playing with one or two players in this game, it's going to be one of those scenarios where you're going to have to play uh, two characters. And I know some people just don't like doing that. I particularly am not the biggest fan of playing as numerous characters. It kind of, I don't know, it breaks the fourth wall for me. I like to get immersed into games, especially thematic games like this is. So when you're playing one or two players, especially one player, you're going to have to play as three different characters, which might break the fourth wall, but that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Another comment that I have with this game is that some people are not going to like the fact that the end of the game normally is going to devolve down into a stand-up die roll moment if you haven't won already. Now, if you've already won, then you don't do the dice rolling at the end. But if you didn't win, and maybe you're, you're close or you're relatively close, you're going to come down to a stand-up die roll or a couple stand-up die rolls, which might be a turn-off to some people. Some people just don't like playing for 30 minutes and then having it devolve into, oh my gosh, if we can just get this lucky die roll, then we can win the game. But that also is something that uh, is completely up to you. Another con that I have with this game is that it is cooperative, which is going to turn some people off. And this is the kind of cooperative game that really can have an alpha gamer problem. Now, it says, specifically says in the rules, keep your cards to yourself. And I think that's kind of to negate the uh, alpha gamer problem. But still, I've seen it happen where someone's like, all right, um, well, here's the thing. I have this attack right here, so if you can do clues, and then if you can do fate, and then we can get back to me, I can use my stunt, and then you can uh, discard one more time, and then he can use a super powerful uh, red card that we talked a little bit about earlier, and then you can use your stunt, then we win the game. Boom. Great. Let's do it, guys. I've seen that happen before, and that, you know, that's not fun for other people, and that's one of the, this is going to be one of those games where if you are an alpha gamer, you're going to have to like, all right. Well, what, what do you think you're going to do this turn? And just let them do it, even if you know that there's a better way to do this, because this game really is just a puzzle, and you're trying to figure out which cards are the best to use at different times. And, you know, if you don't like puzzly games, I don't think this is going to be for you, because this really just is one big puzzle, trying to figure out how you can solve everything, how you can get cards maneuvered, and when you should play which card so that it's going to maximize the bonuses and the potential that you can use it and when you should be discarding fate and the best way to allocate fate and spend fate and when to use your stunts and when to use your um yeah so if you don't like puzzle games this one might not be for you also another comment i have this game when you first get the game you're only going to have five characters now take this with a grain of salt i've never actually played it with just the base game we played with all the expansions already mixed in so i don't even know which cards are expansions and which cards are not but still, only having five characters at the get-go is a little bit lame. Uh, I it would have been nice if they would have had more characters in there from the jump. So you could, you know, mix it up and try the different characters. But that being said, you can still play through five games with 
assuming you're playing five players, without playing as the same character. So that's not really a huge deal. Any other cons I have with the game? No, moving on to the pros. I want to get all those cons out of the way because I'm about to tell you that I love this game and I highly recommend this game. And this game actually makes me want to consider reading the Dresden Files. That's how much I love this game. This game is super close to getting a Bowers Best Seal for games that I give a 9 or higher. And honestly, if I were a fan of the original IP, it probably would. So what do I love about this game? First and foremost, I'm a big fan of cooperative games, and I really like how the cooperative aspect of this game works. Everybody has their own unique cards, their own unique special abilities. Every character that I've played at has a different flavor. Everybody feels a little bit different with their talents and with their stunts and with their deck, and I like that a lot. This really is cooperative. You need to be talking about what you're going to do and planning out the next move and the next move. And I love games that make you do that, that make you stop and look at the board and assess and be like, okay, so this card is going to impact this card, so we need to make sure we take care of this. Oh, we can't even deal with this until we get that, so we need you to use your special ability to move this card forward. And I love that. I love the fact that a lot of these cards connect with each other so it's like oh wait wait we could do damage to this guy but here if we solve this mystery and get all these clues on this then it will automatically do damage on it which means then we'll be in this range to do this thing and do that thing and i love how this game creates discussion at the table now with that being said and i always like to mention this from a solo gamer's perspective i really enjoyed this game solo which i was not expecting to it you have to play as three characters at the same time which i dislike but I still really enjoy this solo. It's short enough that it did not bug me uh, that I was playing as three separate players. It's got an easy setup. It's easy to learn, easy to teach. On your turn, you're only really taking three or four actions, as I mentioned. You're either going to be doing your stunt or discarding for fate or spending a fate to pass or playing a card. And that's all you're going to be doing. I like the fact that as you slowly whittle down the cards, like every decision becomes more and more tense because it's like, oh man, I've only got two cards and you've only got one card. It's like, he's only got four cards. So what's the optimal decision we need to make here? It's like, yeah, I could discard this for fate, but we really might use this to solve a clue later. And I like the fact that you're probably not frequently going to be able to kill all the bad guys or solve all the clues. So then it becomes a delicate balancing act of, yeah, you could put a lot of damage on this guy, but I think we might as well just let this guy live and then solve all these mysteries. I like how there's different ways to win the game. I love the stand-up dice rolling at the end. I know I mentioned that in the cons because some people are going to hate the stand-up dice roll. But I love that. It's like you played so hard and you came up just a little bit short. But it's like, <gasps> if we just get the dice roll to be nice to us, we can win the entire game. And I love that aspect. And in cooperative games, it doesn't bug me as much personally. You know, if it's... If this were a competitive game and I had played better the entire game and then somebody comes in and they roll like five pluses and I lose because of that, then yeah, that's a little bit crummy. But in a cooperative game where it's all of us win, all of us lose, I do enjoy that. I like the artwork. I think it's well done artwork. I don't know if that's from like a graphic novel or a graphic, uh, graphic uh, manga or whatever they're called. Um, but overall, well done rules, well done components. I, I do think you're going to want to get the expansions. I really do. Straight from the jump. This is the kind of game where if you're looking at it, you might want to splurge for an expansion or two. Because as I mentioned, I didn't even know which ones were expansions and which one weren't expansions. But still, Dresden File Cooperative Card Game. Highly, highly recommend this. I enjoyed it at all the player counts. It plays really well at five. It doesn't bog down the game at five. You know, it's not going to be a super long game at five players. Easy to learn, easy to teach, well done rules, nice board, good graphic design, everything's clean and clear. Go get this game. Highly recommend if you like cooperative games. That is the Dresden Files cooperative card game, one that I highly can recommend to you. If you enjoyed this review, please try to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Do you like the Dresden Files? Have you read the book? Was there a TV show? Is there a movie? I don't know any of these questions, so I'm just going to say uh, Harry Potter. That's my answer. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.